Glad to know that you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Senate investigate alleged economic sabotage in petroleum industry is the topic of discussion right now. Mele Kiari, the GCEO of NNPCL, denied allegations of economic sabotage or involvement in substandard oil imports, emphasizing the company's adherence to regulations and integrity. The Dangote Group praised NNPCL's support while Ipman called for better distribution and avoidance of mon monopolies in the sector. Senate and House of Representatives plan a joint investigation into the inefficiencies and alleged sabotage in the petroleum industry, including concerns over the $1.5 billion investment in the Port Harcourt refinery. Our guest this morning is Chuks Akuna, Executive Director, Authority Newspapers. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the, the National Assembly is investigating what is happening in the oil sector. There's been uh, allegations and counter allegations in that sector. And they were invited to the National Assembly to give room or to give account of what has been happening, especially as it regards what uh, the Dangote group would call sabotage. And everybody's talking about it. Um, adulterated fuel, um, money being spent on refineries that are not uh, working, and so many other things. And then Mele Kiari said that. In due time, he's going to expose whatever he knows. It's like, you know, hold on hmm. there. If you talk too much, I go show you, say, Asabi, wait till you know them. <laughs> so I'd like you to comment on the drama going on in the oil sector in Nigeria as regards uh, the sabotage yes. and the supply to the local refineries. Yes, thank you very much. I, I, I think uh, we've gone past that because just last night, late last night, down to the refinery, group uh, issued a statement where they barely exonerated the NNPCL. They said uh, that uh, report, media reports that uh, NNPCL was sabotaging their, their production and their processes were false and that um, they have no problem with um, the fact that um, NNPCL has been very, very cooperative. And that's about, that would be about the sec third or second or third um, vote phase by Dangote refinery, Dangote group on the issue of uh, refinery. And it leads us to the question of, you know, assuming without considering that, um, assuming without considering that um, uh, NMPCL was uh, or is, uh, sabotaging um, Dangote uh, refinery, the question will be, you know, at whose, at whose behest would that be now been? Or I mean, what, why would NMPCL be doing that? You know, there's no, there's no other um, refinery in Nigeria today that can match. I mean, Bangladesh refinery is single largest. Uh, sing, I mean, yes, but but, but Chooks, we shouldn't forget the I mean, fact that there's uh, none. Chooks, can you hear me? Nigeria to match that. So why would it, I mean, if they are doing, one would assume. Can you hear yes, me, Chooks? Please. Uh, let's not forget the fact that uh, one know. of the accusations of Dangote yeah, Group like, was that. They were supplying fuel from Malta, which is owned by some of these members of the NNPCL, even though Mele Kiari has come to deny that. But does it mean that now suddenly the Malta arrangement is no longer there and the NNPCL is suddenly cooperating and all that? After that, um, wait in due course, I'm going to expose people's comment. Because we don't understand. We don't know what has gone under the bridge and all that, but we still know that if uh, fuel has been coming from Malta, uh, we need to know who are in charge, who are the people in charge of bringing that fuel from Malta, who are the people who own these refineries, because if it is owned by people who are in government or close to the government, there's also a possibility that that sabotage has been happening. So if you say whose gain will it be, the people who are operating the Malta uh, refineries should be on the gaining end, but who are there? That's the question. But I also think, yes, I also think that we should be very, very careful as journalists, you know, because uh, when people make a narrative, we run with, we run with such narratives, you know. It's the, uh, even in law, it's, it's he who alleges, you know, that the only son who alleges. If Dangote is sure or was sure that uh, some persons were, uh, some government officials were importing, um, um, he, but he didn't say, he didn't say, actually, Dangote didn't talk about fuel coming from Malta. He, he, he said, that they have that they own a new blending plant in Malta. Mm. New blending new plant is a, is, a, is, a, is a company where petroleum products are 
blended, you know, engine oils, transmission oils, and rest. But even at that, I mean, Dangote as it's never as richest man in Africa should not be known for frivolous talk. Mm. So the question is, if he, why did he stop short of naming those officials, you know? I mean, why was he afraid to name those officials? So that's why I say we have to be very, very careful as journalists when with the, with the news that we fed with. Because the, the pressure, the, what, what the media ought to have done at the time was, okay, Dangote, if you are sure of your facts, you know, lay the cards on the table so that we know, you know, name and shame them. Mm. But instead of doing that, Dangote came last night to say, no, 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 that it's not actually an NPC, that is NU, a PRC, that is the culprit that they've been blocking uh, IOCs from selling crude to them. <laughs> so, so it's really, really, really interesting. If you ask me, it's funny, really interesting. Yeah. Because even governors, presidents, and all that always have a list that they will release in due time, and they mm. never release. They so never uh, <laughs> it, it seems like there's a lot of cover up that's happening yes. in the petroleum industry. Because I remember Dangote at first saying that the IOCs were the ones um, trying to sabotage, then NNPCL, and now this. So what is really going on in the petroleum industry? And are we even going to see, you know, a point where there is no, where we don't have so much drama such as this? You know, it's very interesting. See, if, if you recall, in May last year, that's about uh, 14 months ago, President Buhari went to, as it were, commission Dangote yeah. refinery. Yes. But, but what we come to since come to realize that the refinery was uh, was not commissioned. You know, that it was a major generator that was uh, commissioned, and and to give um, to give um, um, flesh to that to that theory is that 14 months after commissioning a plant, uh, a refinery, you know, the the refinery is still giving excuses as to why it cannot produce. I mean, why it cannot uh, refine petroleum products. Talking about diesel 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 so and um, i'm an investigative journalist so i went down deep down to actually investigate what really might be going on the truth is that as every businessman would you know everybody in life wants uh, wants to enjoy monopoly dangote wants the hands of everybody tied and um, you know he alone become the sole supplier of uh, of uh, petroleum products in nigeria and nobody does that they happened in 2000 in the usa when um the world chest man at the time, Bill Gates, tried to do that in the U.S. You know, he was um, he was heavily fined, and we've seen that um, businessmen are not particularly angels. You know, all over the world, the the, the driving uh, spirit, the, the motive is profit. You know, and um, it doesn't matter if um, if uh, the profiteer at the expense of the masses. I'll give us another example. In in the late 2000s, we had um, Nestle. Nestle is the largest food company in the world, but they had a tainted, tainted milk scandal in Nigeria. They imported expired milk and were to use expired milk to produce milk in Nigeria. That was, I think, 2000 or 2001 in Nigeria. So, you know, throughout history, we, in, uh, in the US too, we have the, one of the biggest, the biggest automaker in Europe, uh, uh, the, the VW Group. They, they falsified figures in America just to pass the emissions test. And they were fined, I think, about $32 billion by the US government. So there are smart Alex everywhere. Every businessman is a, a profit uh, motive driven. So mm. it's not impossible that Dango T2 has his uh, agenda. So when the authorities are saying, no, you have to do this, you have to do that, you know, so it's a crying wolf. And that, that's my opinion, though. But, All right. you know, the, the facts surrounding the facts surrounding the facts surrounding the the controversy surrounding Dangote Refinery mm. and it has not yet been told. I mean, full truth has not yet been disclosed. All right. So si since we're talking about the petroleum industry as a whole, I know that one of the issues we have right now is the removal of fuel subsidy, and that has you know ha that has had an impact on everything in our economy. And the um, the Minister of Petroleum Resources is the president, but we've been expecting for these refineries to start working. Um, we've been told that Port Harcourt refinery will start early August, even though we're in August right now and we don't know the capacity or where it is, the stage it is in now. And also Kajuna refinery will you know, begin operations in December. What do you think is happening with our refineries? Because we expected this to have happened since last year. We keep moving the dates, 
nothing is happening we expect to refine our own products which would you know still help with the cost price when it comes to um the products that's the fuel because it's a it's a it's an essential commodity right so what's happening with all of this um, sector, whereby we cannot just have a working refinery in Nigeria. For a country that is sick, going to be 64 in October, we're still dilly-dallying with several things that are necessary for us. No. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I yes, can hear you. Can hear you. Can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. Please go ahead. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I was just I can, asking I about, about the infrastructure of our refineries. Yes. yes. Okay. Please go ahead. Yes, I, I think we, we in Nigeria, we... we we mix politics with uh, business, and that's a problem. Hmm. You know, if you look at the if you look at the the ways the refineries were were were, were built in the first place, eh? we have one in Kaduna State in Kaduna Town, yeah. and we have one in um, Worry. Water Court. Mm -hmm. We have in Worry, yes. Then, but the the, the issue is this: um, um, we politicize because. Mm -hmm. There was no point building a refinery in Kaduna to start with. What we ought to have done was to build refineries where, because, I mean, it takes, you have to pump crude to Kaduna first, then refine, and then start. It would have been cheaper to produce. In the Niger products, Delta region. Close to source of crude oil, mm. then build the massive um, uh, depots, yes, depots around the north, and then pump, pump petroleum products there, you know, mm. but then. It's been it's been, the, 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 it's been done. It's been done. We can't we can't undo that now. We can't go and remove Kaduna refinery for that. But the issue is this: you know, I I see the members of National Assembly threatening the NMPC boss, threatening the NUPRC boss, you know, and telling them, you know, and then the question remains: these are just appointees. These are mere appointees who can be fired at any given time by the president. So the bigger question should be: do we think that if these guys you know, have a hand or are involved in, in any form of uh, malpractice or trying to sabotage petroleum product supply in Nigeria. The president who's been, I mean, we've had a, a who was president of um, Nigeria and minister of petroleum. Tinubu is president of Nigeria and minister of petroleum. So the book, you know, at the end of this stops at the table of um, of, of the president who, is, who doubles as a minister of affairs. So the question should be, can these lawmakers invite the minister who is the president and say, okay, come talk to us. Why, why this refinery is not working? We want to know why. If they, if indeed they're not they're not interested in chasing and uh, leaving out the substance and chasing shadows. Because you know, I've been in government, it's it's very, very difficult for a contract of such money to be to be awarded without the input of the president or the minister who is in charge of, 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 of the ministry, of the agency. You know, it's very, very improbable that uh, Mele Kerry uh, or Ahmed, uh, um, Ahmed uh, the, 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 the NUPRC boss, will, uh, hand, I mean, will uh, uh, give contracts out, you know, without the clearance of the president. Hello, Chooks. Hello. Oh, I think we just lost um, Chooks's audio there. But yeah, I, I, I think he's so apt because there is no way you're going to award a contract without you know, the permission of the president, who is the Minister of Petroleum Resources. I'm not aware. <laughs> 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 You're on some joke mode today, I can tell. <laughs> but uh, with all of this, yeah, but that's I think what the, the president, the last president, was saying. Some mm. things will happen, and he will come out and say, "I'm not aware." Mm. And he's the president that should be on top of his game. Yeah. He's not aware. Okay, I think Chooks is back. Yes. Okay, I think he's back. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes just can. wrap it up for wrap us. Wrap it up. We have to go now. Can you hear me? But, yes. Because I was saying. So, so I was saying, it's very, very, it's very, very improbable that that a contract of such magnitude will be awarded without the knowledge of the boss. And that's in this case, the president who doubles as the minister of uh, petroleum affairs. So why is National Assembly afraid of inviting the president? To say, I mean, nobody's beyond them. Um, nobody's beyond the law in Nigeria. In the, when Naba, when Gail Naba was Speaker of the House, the, the, the House impeached President Olusegun Obasanjo, and at the time, the, I mean, they the, the, the overwrote the, the overwrote his veto on NDDC. So that's why we have the principle of separation of power, so that the, the legislature can check the executive, and then also the, the legislature can, I mean, they can check themselves. So this issue of calling um, of calling Melekari or Ahmed, you know, in my opinion, I mean, I think, I think they're just avoiding the issue. The issue is the president, who is the minister of uh, petroleum affairs. So if they have any problem, they should be pressed to come to the law of the house or the senate and say, okay, X, Y, Z, this is why this refinery is not here to take off. Thank you. Uh, well, I don't know if the National Assembly can uh, well, ever, ever uh, invite, invite the, the president. president right. You know, all of them are, well, I don't know if this they work said. for the president. Yeah, they, they kind of like work for the president mm -hmm. in Nigeria. That's not what's supposed to be, but they work for the president yeah. and wear his signature cap to show that mm. they are his. And Loyal. They, they will always um, uh, accept everything that comes to him. So we may never get to that bridge before talking of crossing it. Mm. But this is how much we can take, Chubbs. Uh, thank you so much for your thoughts on the program today. And we apologize for the um, internet behavior, mm -hmm. even though it was out of our own hands. Thank you for being a part of our program today. Thank you, Chubbs. I do hope that he was he able to that, hear yes. us, even though we couldn't hear him. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is how we will wrap up for today. Yes. And we'd like to be thankful to everybody who has stayed um, loyal to us and mm -hmm. has been watching us all that. In the sports world, we lost uh, Issa Hayatu, the former uh, FIFA boss in Africa. And that means the uh, football world has lost a very uh, great icon. Yeah. So uh, may he rest in peace. Amen. But for the rest of us who are alive, let's take today seriously and leave it out. Like leave our every says. second <laughs> without yeah. hesitation. Yeah. And that was our quote of the day by Elton John. Well, my name is Nyamgul Agaji. My name is Rume Paul Saint. Thank you for having a breakfast with us. We'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. Bye for now.